Hi everyone, I'm Igor, the co-founder of Amazonia PPC Agency. Since 2016, our agency has been helping Amazon brands scale their businesses. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Amazon DSP. Now, there is a certain veil of secrecy around Amazon DSP. I'll be explaining just an overview of how Amazon DSP works, what it is, where to find some basic functionalities and how to move around in the interface. Throughout this video, I'll be referring to sponsor products, the usual campaign manager stuff. Uh, so for you guys who already know campaign manager, that way you can relate to how certain things are called in Amazon DSP. Now, things will be kind of confusing at the beginning, but once you start to uh, move along and click through the interface, everything is going to uh, sound pretty familiar. So um, as an overview, Amazon DSP stands for something uh, completely illogic. <laughs> it's, it's a demand side platform for me that doesn't mean anything. Um, but the point is, think of it like an advanced tool for sponsored display to show your ads all over the place on Amazon and off Amazon. The first thing that you see when you open up a DSP manager, you're going to see that it's pretty similar to the campaign manager. On the left, you will see a typical menu, as you can see in campaign manager nowadays. Uh, but on the left, there are certain differences. So there is an overview like advertisers, where I click right now. Uh, you will uh, think of it, there is a structure like account level structure where you select your seller account and then below you will have advertisers. Advertisers, think of it like you create additional advertiser for each country that you want to create DSP ads for. Then below that, in a hierarchy, you will see an orders. Think of the orders like campaigns in the usual campaign manager. So campaigns and then inside the orders, you have line items. Uh, and line items need to be need to have audiences and creatives in order to work. Now, um, orders similar to campaigns, uh, you can set some KPIs inside. Now, this is an overview of all of your orders. But when you uh, go ahead and let's choose one order that has enough data inside. Um, okay, inside the order, you will see the order settings. Now, obviously, you can uh, put your name, a descriptive one. For example, here, we like to use as descriptive name as possible. So is it a remarketing order? Is it going to be awareness order or any other KPI? You can add additional comments for you on, and for your team so everybody's aware of the goals. Next up is to select some goals. Now, this is not crucial as it only helps you uh, populate certain fields down below with some predefined numbers. There's a awareness campaign option, a consideration on conversions. Most often we go for conversions, but again, uh, it all depends on the numbers that you select down below. Now, all of these KPIs now reflect what you're going to define later. So is it going to be the, the main KPI? You can set the KPI as return on ad spend, and then you can define a KPI target, or you can opt in to just don't use the, the, the KPI target. So whatever you, you choose, you can rely on automation uh, in DSP, or you can opt in to use uh, to set up everything manually. Now, then you have an option to, to choose an advertising strategy. So some of the options are if you want to have an even pace of distribution of ad, ad budget or you want to go full throttle, for example, if it's a prime day or some other important day for your business. Next up, the most important thing to set up in order is budget. Now, uh, this can be kind of confusing because there are two steps to creating budget in DSP. So one is the budget and next is the flight. Budget is obviously what you can use on a monthly level, but you can define also flights. Flights is like, um, I don't know, like a money added to your wallet. So you want to have enough flights in your wallet so you never run out of budget. For example, if you set your budget to 450 or whatever the number is, 
and you forget to add flights when the time comes so november november 30 2024 if you don't have any flights the order is going to stop delivering so that's most important thing to add so add additional flights so you don't worry about uh, the delivering of your order uh next option there is to put a cap on monthly spend if you like you can choose to to have uncapped daily or monthly cap so if for example if your uh, company is strict with the advertising budget then you will have probably some kind of a cap over here uh next up i'm not going through all the the options like agency fees etc so because it, it, this is just an overview later on in some other videos i will co cover everything next up what you need to define is the product or products which you are going to advertise on this order so you go ahead and add those just simple search and add similar to what you can see in campaign manager next up is the frequency you can use the frequency cap uh, which is highly recommended frequency cap is that you can limit how many times somebody sees your ad so if you put that number too high then you, you get a um, negative association with your brand like you keep popping up every, everywhere so it can be a um, completely opposite effect on your potential buyers now we've set this to 15 <laughs> which is huge but we did we did that because one order can have multiple line items inside of it so these 15 um impression cap is going to be divided by uh, several line items that we have inside. Line items are like folders or ad groups. Uh, and yeah, those are the basic uh, settings for an order. Now, inside the order lie the line items, as I mentioned. So you can have multiple line items. What we usually like to do is that to split those line items similar to what we do in campaign managers so we we like the granularity to have full control over the performance and over the reporting so we usually create each line item per uh, device served so because in amazon dsp you can choose if you want to serve your ads on desktop on mobile and then you can actually create pretty granular uh, campaign structure inside inside line items you will also have the option to set audience to create audiences and set bits let's now go ahead and check one line item okay here we are uh line item so every line item is gonna have a name so you want to go as descriptive as you can be like is it uh, like product name or or, or sku then is it the remarketing is it, uh, is it awareness is it for mobile is it for desktop etc here you have an option some of these are now unavailable to to change because you can only set that during the campaign uh, sorry line item creation but we selected for this one to be on um, amazon mobile display only then you will have you have an option to select the products this is for mostly for we already created, uh, selected for which products the line item is going to be. So which products are going to be advertised. This product section is is more like uh, for categorization purposes and for reporting uh, where your product belong. Then for for inventory, you actually can create. You, sorry, you can choose where to where your ads going to appear. So since we created Amazon Mobile Display as a media. You, we only want to have the the places where we want our ads to show up is going to be only mobile because we, as I said, we want to segment segment out where we uh, going to appear. So there are other options to select like uh, IMDb or Twitch, but we've selected only Amazon Shopping App or Amazon Mobile Web. Yeah, so the ad placements can be found throughout the Amazon Mobile website, including on the homepage, search results page, and product detail pages uh don't say changes yeah next up is the audience targeting so this is the most important thing and most interesting um here you define where your ads gonna appear so you can create custom audiences we're gonna cover audiences in, in my in, in a few moments but uh, once you create an audience you go ahead and add them here uh, important note here is that you have an options to add which kind of audiences you want to target and what kind of audiences you want to exclude from targeting. Like if somebody already 
uh, bought your products, you don't want to target them. Or for example, if it's a consumable, then definitely you want to include those previous buyers. Then you have an, an option to only show your locations to specific uh, country. Uh, there are some additional options that we're going to cover uh, in a later video, like contextual targeting and third-party prebate. Uh, now, next up is the delivery dates. Now, uh, here, similar to flights on your order side, you want to also make sure to have your delivery in the future as much as possible so you can uh, always be sure that it, it is uh, deliver, delivering. Um, next important option is to define, is it a line item can use a budget uh, that you set on the order level and you can also define a separate line item budget. For example, if you set your budget on order level one of uh, $1,000, then all the line items gonna use that $1,000 of budget. But you can, if you select automatic distribution, then the system automat automatically is gonna push all those line items that have best performance compared to the other ones. But also you can do it manually and say, hey, I wanna my remarketing to have 700 dollars per month month out of those 1000 uh, defined in order and the other two you can then uh, distribute however you like there's also an option to set a budget cap and choose a pacing pacing is we usually choose even pacing it, it's like uh, literally a pace how how you want your budgets to be distributed throughout the month we're gonna skip the fees and as I said, you can define a frequency limit of how many times a shopper can see your ad. And the final step here is the bidding. Uh, so this is like, you can use many different options based obviously on your category, and you can also define your maximum average cost per month. Uh, this video <laughs> might be a little bit boring, but it's created for you just to sense how Amazon DSP works and what I mean, what what are the available options? Okay, next up are the audiences. Here you can literally create whatever you like. There are options for you to create a new audience based on your customer list. For example, you you can upload your email list to Amazon. They're gonna anonymize it and you can then create a similar audience based on that you can create an audience based on let me let me show you if somebody saw your products this is what we usually use some so audience based on the products on the brands people who engage with brands on amazon many many options you can you can see uh over here what is available so external traffic web pixels twitch ads you name it. Most of the time we're going to use products and that's where you can define, for example, you add additional products, uh, you, you add your products and you can then create your audience. Hey, uh, show my ads to the people who viewed my products in the last seven days, but haven't bought. That's uh, like a basic setting. You can also set that uh, in a sponsored display and a regular campaign manager. But what's interesting here, for example, you can add your competitor ASINs and then say, hey, I want to target aggressively people who viewed all of these competitor ASINs and haven't bought them in the last seven days. So those are really hot leads. And you can even further define, like, I want these ads to show on the for the, uh, to the people who viewed my competitor listings, haven't bought, but didn't view my listings. So it's a it's pretty useful thing. Um, also, as you saw, you can also exclude some of your audiences. For example, if you want to target new potential buyers, you want to exclude your previous buyers. You don't want to bother them with your ads as it's going to show your brand in a negative way, like you're chasing them up and they already bought. Um, Next up is uh, to talk about the creatives. Now, creatives on Amazon DSP, there's a simple option just to use responsive, dynamically created creative. So you can just add your product, define a headline if needed, a few other settings, and Amazon's going to do uh, all the work for you. 
we found that pretty solid because Amazon dynamically resizes your ad to show on numerous places. And then uh, also they're kind of pushing that dynamic e-commerce display creative uh, because some of the options that you we're going to talk about in future, um, some of the options require you to actually use their uh, dynamic responsive um, ad type and not your uh, like custom creatives. Um, and it perfectly makes sense because then it, they, it, it enables them to show your ad whenever they, they see the, in, the, the likelihood of a sale is increased. Yeah, so that would be it. I think for this video, it's pretty boring as I go through the options, but I just wanted to let you guys know how this actually looked like. So in the coming weeks, I will be recording step-by-step -step tutorials on how to create a certain orders. We're gonna create additional reports that you can actually pull up to see which, what, kind, what kind of play, placements there are and what is the performance, how to optimize those how to see which uh, creative size is working best for you and how to optimize for the best possible return on ad spend. So stay tuned and let me know in the comments if you find this useful and if you need any further assistance. If you need help with Amazon DSP, Amazonia PPC is an agency that can provide these services for you. So let us know if you need any help. I hope you liked the video. So yeah, see you in the next one. Bye guys.